Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we got a comparison for you. It's been a while and I love doing these. We're gonna compare old versus new. What should you do? Stick around to find out. As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you're looking for a stability solution for your tractor, these guys are made in America and have a lifetime warranty. Check out Bora. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to know about it. So give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. If you wanna see more tractor videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, check out goodworktractors.com. Common question is, what should I do? Should I get something older and cheaper or newer and more expensive? There's a trade-off for everything. Let's tackle some of those big points, those key differences between a couple of tractors like this and help you make the right decision. Let's keep this somewhat organized, have five different main topics. Let's talk about pricing, performance, maintenance, safety, and creature comforts. Those are important too. Okay, let's talk about pricing first. And one thing I wanna point out, we're not talking about brand new tractors here. So more of like a modern versus an ancient type of comparison. So if you wanna compare brand new versus slightly used, like what I sell, that's really a conversation for another day. Okay, so prices for everything just keep on climbing. And it's pretty frustrating, but it's the reality. I don't see that changing anytime soon. So this tractor here, I paid for it last winter around $5,000, believe that or not. This got about 2,800 hours on it. It runs, not great. It's got some issues going on, we'll get into that. It did include the Kubota tiller that's on the backside. Now, if we're talking about the 1025R, okay, 2018, about 200 hours, a little bit more than that. But if I sold that with a loader and a tiller, the same setup that you have over here on the Kubota, you're gonna be around $17,000. So both these prices are way up from what they were just not that long ago. But again, that's what we're looking at at this point in time. And it's really just to give you a set of numbers. So you have about a $12,000 price difference between these two machines set up the same way for an apples to apples comparison. You can see they're fairly similar in size, right? However, that $12,000 price difference doesn't tell the whole story. So let's take a deeper dive into that now. Okay, so let's talk about maintenance on both of these machines here. And I think it goes without saying, you're gonna have a lot more wrenching time on this older Kubota. And so while this Kubota may be easier to work on, it means you're gonna have more downtime, not productive time. And if you don't mind wrenching on something all the time instead of using it to get your work done, well, then maybe that's the kind of tractor for you. However, these cylinders could be rebuilt on this loader. These brakes constantly seize up. It's burning some oil amongst quite a few other issues that it has. So while this tractor is technically usable right now in its current condition, it's really not a matter of if, but when the next big repair hits. So on the newer machine, you know, of course, it's a lot less likely, but there is no guarantee that you're not gonna have problems. So we had a, a seal go out on the front right hub on the 1025R, this is my 1025R. And so this tractor was under warranty still, powertrain warranty from John Deere. And so essentially I just found a window of time where I didn't need the tractor. We took it into deer, it was replaced under warranty, no money out of pocket. So it was gone for a few days, but we got it back quickly and it was back to work. And the one other issue that we had of any significance was really with the battery up front. And for me, man, I have trouble with batteries on every tractor I've had. <laughs> so we did have to replace a battery at one point. That one wasn't under warranty though. So for me, myself, the decision is I want something newer that I am confident I can just go out and get my work done with. You know, trying to find parts for an older machine can be a bear, especially the older and older that it gets. And the free time that I have, I wanna use my tractor to get the jobs done at my house and at the property and not wrenching on my machine. So even if the maintenance is cheaper on that Kubota overall, for me, it's tough to put a value on that lost downtime you can't get that back. Okay, let's talk about performance for a minute here. And this Kubota is technically classified as a compact tractor while this 1025 is a subcompact. Now that's just a bit of nomenclature, but it kind of paints a picture a little bit on how tractors have evolved over time. So we think about things like performance, you know, lift capacity, lift height with the loader, with the three point hitch, maybe with a mid PTO, even the base machine weight is gonna be different. Back in the day, hydrostatic machines were not a thing. And now on modern subcompact or compact tractors, it's basically standard to get a hydrostatic transmission with only a few models having a gear drive option. And so while there are gonna be some pros and cons of a gear drive versus a hydro, for most, the vast majority of modern tractor owners, a hydrostatic machine is gonna be more efficient, it's gonna be very simplistic and easy to use and appeals to a wider audience. So funny enough, there is actually a hydrostatic variant of the Kubota B7100 that did debut sometime in the late 70s and was kind of in production and then out of production, but hydro machines really didn't gain mass popularity until 
kind of the mid to late 90s and then really from that point on it was a rarity to find a gear drive. So a couple other things I like about this older Kubota are gonna be these bigger tires. I really wish there was an option at least to put bigger tires on the subcompacts. And the little bit of time I've put on this tractor, you know, it's hard to quantify, but it just feels like it's almost a little bulldozer. Like, so I don't know what it is exactly. It's just kind of a feeling you get sitting on here. It's a lighter machine, it's a smaller machine. It just feels like it could go through anything. And so don't get me wrong, there's some really good tread patterns that come on these modern subcompacts. We've actually got some spacers, two inch spacers on this tractor, so it's pushing these tires out a little bit further. And so this is really a good setup for somebody that's gonna be using a belly mower, but it'd be nice to see an option for just a bigger, maybe burlier set of wheels and tires on here for more of a non-residential application. But you know, you're buying a tractor to get your projects done. And so it's just a reality as technology advances and improves over time, you're gonna lift more on both the loader and the three-point hitch. You're gonna lift it higher. You're gonna have a drive over option on a belly mower. You're just gonna have a whole lot of additional capacity on a modern compact or subcompact compared to something that's about 50 years old. So you know we're pretty big on safety here, and that's gonna be a really big difference between a modern tractor versus an older tractor. And so while safety is often looked at as a bit of an inconvenience, and it also drives the cost up a lot of times as well, these features were implemented because of a lot of very dangerous and very bad accidents that happened over the decades gone by. And so a short list of these features that are meant to save your life and keep you tractoring for another day could be the ROPS bar, it could be a seat belt, it could be the extra work lights to have better vision. It's a seat safety switch, so if you hop off the seat or you fall off the seat, it kills the tractor. Oh, it's a PTO kill switch if you're backing up in reverse. It's a rear PTO shield to help prevent any accidental damage back there with sleeves getting caught. The machine's even advanced enough, and we found that out recently, to kill the PTO if you start to overheat the engine, that way you can go into a recovery mode and dissipate the heat. So I'll tell you, as an operator, I feel a lot more comfortable and confident getting my work done on a tractor like this versus an old tractor like that one. Now there are a couple of deficiencies in the safety department that both the modern and the old tractor share, and that's gonna be a lack of rear weight or rear ballast weight of any kind on these machines and a disproportionately high center of gravity. They're long, they're narrow, and your seat's up high. That can lead to a real problem feeling tippy side to side. So at some point you have to take matters into your own hands while all these safety features are fantastic on the modern tractors you got to look at adding that ballast weight if you're feeling tippy look into a set of wheel spacers like the ones from bora we offer a weight bracket and weight bundle to hang on your three-point hitch to add additional ballast weight so if you're using the front end loader you don't want to tip right over in the front it's going to keep you planted on the ground but you typically need even more ballast weight than just that so you can add on wheel weights we can add those to an order for no extra shipping cost get liquid ballast in your tires Find something else to hang off the three-point hitch. I would encourage you all to take safety very seriously because we're not all guaranteed a second chance. Alrighty, so let's talk about something that uh, I really enjoy and that's gonna be creature comfort. And so ease of connection is a huge creature comfort in my mind. Everything from the backhoe on the backside that you can take on and off in five minutes, we've done a video on that to the mid-mount mower, how you can take that on and off in just a couple of minutes. We've done a video on that. To your front end loader and even taking your bucket on and off, how easy it is to do in just a couple of minutes. It makes life so simple and enjoyable to get different projects done around your property. And guess what? We've also done a video on that. Up here in the operator station, you're gonna have a suspension seat. Some models actually have an air ride upgrade. You have some armrests on here. It does slide back and forth. You're gonna have tilt steering found on most of these modern tractors along with cruise control, even a padded floorboard. This model again is gonna have some um, work lights mounted to the side that do swivel around. Even your loader joystick is mounted in a much more convenient and usable location. And we touched on it before, but a hydrostatic transmission is really a creature comfort, and that's why it is so widespread these days. And because these modern subcompacts and compacts are getting to be so popular, there's a lot of companies out there that we're working with as well that are starting to sell and manufacture little accessories and add-ons that you can put grab handles on, or mirrors and brackets, or steps, tie-down points, grill guards, ROPS accessories, and just all sorts of stuff that seems to come out almost every day to make your tractor experience a lot more enjoyable, and that's just something you're not gonna find for most of the older tractors that are on the market. Oh, and one more creature comfort that I forgot about till I started driving this around again 
is there's no power steering on these old guys. So that is a very nice feature to have on the modern day tractors. These can be a bit of a bear to turn. Okay, well that's kind of the big hitters, at least that I have in my mind. I know that everybody has their own situation, your own kind of priority list on what is most important to you, and you're gonna have a different take on it. So really, I don't think this is much of a competition besides the mere cost. And that is something that you're gonna pay for in a lot of other ways as we talked about today. And oftentimes you're gonna find yourself wanting to sell that older machine and get something newer. And typically doing so is gonna cost you more money in the long run. Well, I appreciate you guys sticking around. You know, I'm sure a lot of you have some good information to add. So please do leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your tractor, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for taking the time to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.